Hello all, this is JC3 from Is This Real? Do you want to start your own podcast? Then look no further than Buzzsprout.com. We here at Green Hour Media use Buzzsprout, and we love the team at Buzzsprout. They are all about helping you succeed. Buzzsprout gets your show listed in every major podcast platform. Follow the link in our show notes to let Buzzsprout know that we sent you. It gets you a $20 paid Amazon gift card if you sign up with a paid plan and help support our show. Join us and over 100,000 podcasters already using Buzzsprout.com to get your message out to the world. Live from the Keith Vincent Cahill Studios in Patterson, New Jersey, Green Hour Media presents Is This Real? Brought to you by Golden Spins. In tonight's episode, we explore who is Jeffrey Epstein. And as usual, here's our host, Joe Cahill III. Joe? Welcome, 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 everybody. Welcome to another fantastic episode of Is This Real? Tonight's episode, as Dad said at the beginning, we are talking about who is Jeffrey fucking Epstein. This is a big case for us, gentlemen. This is a very, very big case that has a lot of loopholes and a lot of uh, things that will throw you allegations. The fuck off. Allegations, allegedly, <laughs> they're allegedly ad- will be thrown out here tonight. A, a lot of allegedly, <laughs> they're allegedly ad- allegations. Allegedly, yeah, a lot. How you guys feeling about this? I feel good about it. I, I do. To, I think that the, the subject matter is going to be really good. And uh, you know, if we play our cards right and we do the right thing, I think that uh, world of research. I'm looking over here at Ryu. He's got the. Uh, I'm sorry, Ryu or Wahoo, whatever the fuck you call yourself these days. Wahoo. He's Wah- gonna call you Wahoo for now. <laughs> okay. He's got a notebook that like he can Wahoo. publish after the end of this, and we probably can make a couple of bucks. Allegedly. Allegedly. I, I actually. You know what's funny? You know what's funny? What? Side note. Side note. Side note. All right, don't hit my mic. Allegedly, to Allegedly. all. Allegedly, <laughs> Allegedly, gotcha. To all. To all. I'm gonna. Can I take a? I'm gonna take a photo of that right now. You and, have to. You have and to. Then just, it on just, our, for, just for just for just for uh, insurance purposes. Allegedly, to just, all. Dude, pop your eyes out for that. Oh my god. Oh dear yep, god. We got that. Anyway, I guess I'll start off, yeah, gentlemen. Yeah. I know you've been chomping at the bit at this one, yeah. so, I think well, so, okay. so this is Josh's baby, by the way. So who, so who, so who is Jeffrey Epstein? I, I think yeah, that's well, going to be so the because... first question that we're going to talk about this episode, and then um, I think next week we'll go into all the allegations. But let's talk about who the fuck is Jeffrey Epstein? Go for it. Yes. Who yes. is this man, yes. and why is he such a phenomenon these days? Is the best word. See, my English is good tonight. Keep it that way. So far. Anyway. I jinxed myself. So, ladies and gentlemen, to start us off, Jeffrey Epstein. Jeffrey Edward Epstein, if no one knows, is an American financer. He was also a convicted sex offender. So, a little history is that, a quick little fact, is he began his professional life as a teacher at first. Uh, He switched to banking and financing sector in various roles, working at different firms, and finally finally a firm of his own. So to give us the facts, we got birth date, January 20th, 1953, in Brooklyn, New York, New York. And to speed things up, we're going to fast forward. The death of him would be August 10th, 2019. And that would be actually inside the Metropolitan Correctional Center in New York, New York. Allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah. Um, One thing I find kind of weird, maybe it's because of all the allegations and stuff like that. And maybe it's just from my experience in life. His actual burial date is a little bit far off. His what date? His his burial. burial, burial, His actual burial date. Okay. So figure August 10th, 2019. All right. They, They buried him. September 5th, 2019. And that so almost was a month later. almost a month later right. at the, is it IJ Morris at Star of David Cemetery of the Palm Beaches in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. 
that could be why that's south of us. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's just a little tidbit. We'll save that oh. probably for later. Uh, education. Uh, the main one was Current Institute of Mathematical Science in New York, uh, New York University from 1971 to 1974. Uh, as far as family is concerned, he does have a sibling, uh, one brother, Mark Epstein. And as far as parents is concerned, he has Seymour G. Epstein and Pauline Epstein. So that is the basic facts for Jeffrey. Well, I'll throw in a a couple little tidbits here, too. His early teaching career, uh, he started working in September of 74 as a physics and mathematics teacher for teens at Dalton High School in the Upper Upper East Side, which is kind of creepy. That's where, where it begins. Uh, so, Donald Barr was the headmaster until June 1974. Uh, he was also known to several uh, unconventional recruitments at the time, although it was unclear whether he had a direct role in hiring Epstein. Um, another thing, he did uh, join the Bear Stearns, I believe I'm saying that, Bear Stearns Bank in 1979 as a low-level junior assistant to a floor trader. He swiftly moved out the company as options trader, working in the special products division, and then advised the bank's wealthiest clients, such as Seagram president Edgar Bronfram. I'm uh, Bronfram. Uh, B R O N F A M A N. I mean, something important you kind of left out was that he met he met the CEO Alan Greenberg of Bear Stearns through one of the students that he was teaching at the time. That's where he got his little like. At least that's what the, at least what they're what they're saying is how yeah. he got himself in into the financial world. Yeah, and like the beginning of his his his, his career. His career, as you want to say. so they say. Raise your mic up. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Uh, in eighty one, he founded his own consulting firm, the International Assets Group Inc., or IAG, which assisted clients in recovering stolen money from fraudulent brokers and lawyers. He. Uh, Described his work as high level bounty hunting. Well, he was, also, he was also a bit of a nut job too. He claimed to be, he claimed to be an intelligent a- agent, okay. but like you know, well, that's neither confirmed nor nor denied. He's got to be. Well, I could just add this really fast. He's got to be intelligent in some sh- uh, some way, shape, or form, um, because as of like oh, intelligence agents, like like CIA intelligence. Oh, agents. okay, okay. Well. Uh, I just meant like finance wise. Um, he's got to be intelligent because as of July 2019, his net worth was $559 million. Wow. And his title was obviously owner of Jeffrey Epstein, uh, the Six Foundation. Yeah, see, that's, that's uh, you know, he had a lot of different things, too. I mean, I'm reading here, he had the Jeffrey Epstein, Epstein and Company now, and that was actually, um, you know, he was... He was uh, an advisor to the billionaire Leslie Wexner, who actually was a CEO of L Brands and Victoria's Secret. So, I mean, maybe that's where he got the, the little itch in his pants for, for what... What was to be brought on later? Well, something interesting about L Brands too is that L Brands uh, used to own part of Abercrombie and Finch, okay, and, and Hollister and all, all these that back clothing then. stores. So mm. these are all these are all clothing stores that were like pretty much targeted more for like younger, younger, younger children. Mm-hmm. So that's where that's that that can also play a role in it if we if we want to look. I mean, like, is Victoria's Secret really for younger children? Well, no, well, like that. Well, the L brand, well, the L bar, the L brand yeah. part, because. Yeah. Um, but this is something interesting. In uh, 2017, Vicky Ward said that she was told by a former senior White House official that you uh, that the U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of Florida, Alexander Acosta, who handles Ep- who handled Epstein's criminal case in 2008, said to Trump's transition team interviewers that. I was told Epstein belonged to intelligence and to leave it alone, and that Epstein was above his pay grade. Epstein had a lot of a lot of um, people in the right area. He had a lot of them. I mean, if you look into how do you get that way though? Well, money, money. If you you know, he was involved in 1987. He was involved in a Ponzi scheme. 
um, with, a, with an agency called Tower Financial Corporation. It was a half a billion dollar Ponzi scheme. Epstein was said that uh, you know he was one of the masterminds behind the scheme, but he ended up getting away with it, getting unscathed, leaving Tower a few years later before it fell apart in 90, 1993. So he he knew what he was doing. He obviously knew the system and how to and how to and how to flip money into it. Yeah, and once you do that, you can buy people. And now, now I'm not going to say he bought anybody in Florida, but it just it's funny to me that you know him being down there and and uh, you know being brought up on charges and stuff, and the government basically looked the other way. And this this is you know this isn't done by luck. This is done by design. This is done with the, paying the right people and the right thing, which goes back into his 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 upbringing where. You know, knowing what numbers to crunch, what numbers to to do, what we how to how to um how do I say it um how to you know um put the right people together, you know, with, with the money you're making, and then use that to your advantage going forward. I mean, it, this is part of his his upbringing, basically. That's what it's coming well, down see, to. He's had he's had a lot of uh a, lo- a lot of activities. You know, I'm just reading a lot of things that in the media. In 2003, he bid to acquire New York Magazine. Other bidders included advertising executive Donnie, uh, Donnie Dooch, investor Nelson Peltz, media mogul New York Daily News publisher uh, Mortimer Zuckerman, and film producer Harvey uh, Weinstein. Um, in 2004, Ep- uh, Epstein and Zuckerman committed up to $25 million to finance Radar, a celebrity and pop culture magazine f- uh, founded by Mayor Roshan. Epstein and Z- uh, Zuckerman were equal partners in the venture. Roshan, as edit- editor-in-chief, retained a small ownership stake. It folded after three uh, issues. So, And then he did uh, Liquid Funding Limited. He was a president of the company Liquid Funding Limited between 2000 and 2007. Uh, the company was an early pioneer in expanding the kind of debt that could be accepted or on repurchase or the repo market, which involves a lender giving money to a borrower in exchange for securities that the borrower then agrees to buy back at an agreed upon later time and price. Mm-hmm. I don't know what any of that means. Well, basically, it's a scheme. That's just what it comes down to. So basically, he, he just did. He was involved in a shit ton of schemes throughout his entire career. Yeah. Allegedly. 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 I mean, there's a lot of stuff that, you know, in early 2000, he was, uh, he expanded his portfolio, but to, to finance media companies, you know, and then, uh, yeah, that's he, what I just said. Uh, he was like almost basically, it's the Jeff, the Jeffrey Epstein, the, the, the sixth foundation, another company. So it's one company after another, um, you know, he, uh, hedge funds. He was a big hedge fund manager. Right. Too. I mean, these are things, once you start putting yourself out there with all this, you know, in different, you diversify yourself, you're going to start making a lot of money, especially if you're doing it correctly. And he obviously did it correctly, but he also surrounded himself with some pretty famous friends. You know, you had the Bill Clintons, you you had uh, Donald Trump, Prince Andrew. These are all guys that have a lot of money. A lot of power, too. A lot of power. You're talking about two ex-presidents and, you know, well, Prince Andrew. A prince, a, prince of, a prince of what, the United Kingdom or England? Yeah, the UK, yeah. UK, yeah. So I mean, these are these are you're gonna you're gonna get you know enough and, money. Yeah, to, you're not even talking about how many U.S. senators and uh, congressmen that he surrounded himself with. Also, there was a lot of people, and then attorneys, then, and then actors and stuff. Josh, you got anything about actors over there? I mean, I know I know Kevin Spacey was involved here, but there's a laundry list there. It it really is. I mean, it, it, there's so much even into like the music industry and it just like blows my mind. It is, it's one of those things where you gotta sit there and think how much credibility does it really have? Like, yeah. I, I believe, uh, I think we might have talked about it earlier. It was uh, like people like John Legend mm-hmm. I think was one that was mentioned. Uh, what was it? Chevy Chase was another one. Although, it, I think he would probably proudly say that depending on what day it is for him. <laughs> um, it, it's it, it, there's a whole list. I, what was uh, what was the other one? It was um. Yeah, I wrote down in my notes right now that because uh, they mentioned like people like John Legend. Yeah. That uh, that others such as Ellen DeGeneres, John Legend, uh, Chrissy. Uh, I'm guessing John Lennon's wife. I can never pronounce her last name. Tegan. 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 Uh, Oprah. Oprah Winfrey have been wrongly uh, linked to this. Because to these, to the, uh, not to this, to these logs. That's what I, my bad. Right. Well, so you have to figure out, like, 
they're on uh, obviously his flight list, right? The guest on what? What's his uh, plane well, called? They called it the Lolita Express. Lolita Express. Because yeah. they're the, the he called the Orgy Island. Right. The, the, no, that's what the locals yeah, called the it. Island. These are things that you know. Um, they call it that way because he basically is a confessed he's a, he's a proven pedophile and he's flying you know little girls or whatever around on that plane. So that asks, that that that's got to ask you why would a celebrity get involved with him? Why would they be on that plane going to the island where you know this guy's committing these crimes? You know what I'm saying? Why would you get on that plane? Why would you risk your your um fame and your fortune and your reputation you know put yourself involved with this nitwit you know i i, I don't i just don't understand when you you know he he bought an island in the virgin islands he paid eight million dollars for it and then this is allegedly allegedly allegedly, allegedly where the crimes were committed eight million dollars for an island that's it it's honestly islands are not that expensive. Well, they are they are expensive, yes, but like some island depending it would on the seem the, like the, no, the, it's depending on the location because like there are islands out in like Fiji and stuff like that that you can get them for like about like six seven hundred million uh, not seven million dollars like six seven, uh, thousand dollars and shit. Yeah, it's all about the location. The Caribbean is one of those locations that's just like island. really like pricey. Why can't I buy my own island? Josh? Here's what? here's something I find a little something odd. interesting too is that he moved is that he moved the the company. I, I think you mentioned it. He moved the company to the U.S. Uh, Virgin Islands for tax purposes to evade taxes. Uh, there you go. Again, this is all part of the the scheme with these people. They get a lot of money. They they think they become they become invincible. Untouchable. Right, untouchable. They can do what they want. Well, um, unsinkable. He, he, here's, I mean, I'm, go with uh, what you were gonna say next because I have something interesting also. I I'm going to go with the baby ranch. Anybody here hear about the baby ranch he was involved in? Uh, no. I wrote that. I wrote that in my notes. Yeah, okay, that, he was that, a believer. That one was, a, that one was a little out there for me. Yeah, he was a believer in eugenics and transhumanism, whatever the fuck that is. Uh, it's like a um, facts, man. It's like some, like you, you believe that like you can adv- advance your, like some cyborg type. So shit. basically, what we're saying is, I put my brain to a computer, and then. When my body dies, I could put my brain to somebody else. I think that's what it is. Well, it's Trans- saying here he bought he well, bought a ranch in New Mexico. Block, look up transhumanism, please. I'm looking up eugenics. First, and he intended to, sure. to seed the human race with his DNA by insemin- inseminating at least 20 women. So reported in August of 2019 in an article from the New York Times. Now is that proven? Well, I, you know, again, the New York Times take it take it for a grain of salt. Some of the shit they came out with against Trump was not proven, but they 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 went out there and did it anyway. Um, I don't I don't see. Any well, I'm not gonna lie that not. that that see the human race thing with his DNA. That sounds like some rich, crazy guy. That does idea. sound like a rich person idea. That sounds like so, exactly. That well, sounds like some yeah, nut shit, bro. As Literally, the, <laughs> yeah. As per the definition for eugenics, it's actually a set of beliefs and practices that aim to improve the genetic quality of a human population, uh, historically by excluding people and groups judged to be inferior or promoting those judged to be superior. So that motherfucker was Adolf Hitler. Yeah, he's trying. He was trying to uh, even up the gene pool. Basically, and, you know, he was this this. Uh, this year's not this year's, but this uh, generation's Hitler. Through without, sex. yeah, through, through sex. sex, without through like, sex and I, I really would we'll go without that's a, saying that's a very, that's a very yeah. well, wild can, comparison, well, but no, wild. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get Hitler, the you know, yeah, get the, yeah, no, get the gist, you, know. you can't really compare Hitler. Hitler's got well. What I'm saying, no, 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 no. Technically, I'm, you can the compare, idealism. Idealism. Yeah, yeah. I believe I said that word. Idealism. Ideology. Ideal, yeah, the ideology. I, the ideology is there. there. Okay. Te- okay. Technically, you can compare him to that only on the one aspect that actually Hitler did try doing that himself. I didn't say Epstein point. tried to no, murder really? six million yeah, he people. He had, uh, as far as I remember from like old uh, old studies and stuff like that, Hitler actually tried to have women uh, breed only with the pure race. Well, the race that he considered the pure, race. yeah, the master race, you know, blonde hair, blue eyes, and there we was women that that hair, were most eyes. fertile and stuff like that, and only like top generals in his army would be breeding with these women. So mm. you can make so, that comparison, yeah, those, those to wild, that degree. It's just, but some that's wi- it. it's just some wild belief of ideologies. That's, that's just white like people shit. That's it's just some evil white people shit. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm not going to disagree. <laughs> 
Wording. I can't even. I can't. Okay, I can't even say all that. It's just some evil shit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, some evil shit. Something interesting though, because obviously he was. It's either he knew what he was doing. He knew it, what. He was doing. what? Oh, I honestly. Um, well, no, no. Hold no, on, no, uh, just leave, real gonna, quick, and then we're going to take a break for our for our sponsor, but. Um, we'll, we'll talk about this after we come back from our sponsor. So he had apparently installed concealed cameras in numerous places on his property to allegedly record sexual activity with underage girls by prominent people for criminal purposes such as blackmail. And we'll talk about that after our uh, sponsor. Are you looking for a vinyl LP or cassette tape? 45 RPM? If so, you come to the right place. Golden Space. We have thousands of titles in stock and ready to ship. Call us at 862-336-2275 or go to our store at discogs.com backslash seller backslash golden spins backslash profile. We can find whatever you may need. We proudly accept PayPal and every major credit card. So welcome back. So like I said right before... Our little break there. So he record, he can uh, installed cameras in his place, uh, uh, Pedophile Island, mm-hmm. in his house to oh. record the sexual activities with underage girls. Yeah, by prominent people for blackmail. Yes, uh, one of the one of the women that came forth, uh, Shante Shanti Davis, one of the masseuse. Mm-hmm. Uh, she claimed that she like. That the whole place was being monitored the entire time because she escaped to a part of it, or one of the girls escaped to a part of an island that's like you can't you can't go to, and they found her like instantly. So that just goes to show you that you can't get on this, you can't get on or off this island without them knowing. Uh, a team of journalism uh, journalists tried to get on this island a while mm. back, and they were just approached by guys on on ATVs and guns telling them, "No, get the fuck back." Well, so even this was when he was still alive behind bars too. So, so let's just uh, backtrack a little to get to his first uh, criminal case, which was the initial developments for two thousand five, two thousand six. Um, in March two thousand five, a woman contacted Florida's Palm Beach Police Department and alleged that her fourteen year old stepdaughter had been taken to Epstein's mansion by an older girl. There, she was allegedly paid three hundred dollars, equivalent to three hundred ninety uh, ninety dollars in twenty nineteen. Just saying, uh, to strip <laughs> and just, massage just, just Epstein. Uh, she had allegedly undressed but left the uh, encounter wearing her underwear. Uh, they, the Palm Beach police began thirteen month uh, undercover investigation of Epstein, including a search of his home. During the investigation, Palm Beach Police Chief Michael Ryder publicly accused the Palm, Bre- uh, Palm Beach County State Prosecutor Barry uh, Krishner, Krischer, Krischer, of being too lenient and called for help from the FBI. So has, the F- Go on. Has anybody figured out this guy Kirshner? Was he involved with Epstein at all? Do you know if he had ties with Epstein? Uh... Because the rabbit hole is getting really, really deep here, and you got to understand, you got to, you got to start asking the questions: Who in Florida that were in a position to prosecute this guy? If he, if you, if if a mother brought her, you know, allegations against this guy, then they start this long investigation. Why didn't they just arrest him at that point? Well, see, the funniest part because I'm looking uh, through the thing, and the, the police search. Of Epstein home found two hidden cameras and a large number of photos of girls throughout the house, some of which the police had interviewed in the course of their investigation. Adriana Ross, a former model from Poland who became Epstein's assistant, reportedly removed computer drives and other electronic equipment from the financier's Florida mansion before Palm Beach police searched the home as part of the investigation. So obviously, if they found... If they found... You know, photos of right. girls mm-hmm. in the house. Yeah. And you're talking about hundreds of photos. Right there, he should have been arrested and charged with the crime. Yeah, I agree. Like if you have, especially ones that they've interviewed, like right there, you have proof that these girls were inside the house and in their underwear. Mm-hmm. If you have 14 year old and 15, 14, 15, 16 year old girls in your house and you're a 50 year old man and they're not your children. Right. And you're photographing them, even if they are your children. You're photographing girls in their underwear. Mm-hmm. You need to be arrested. You do. And I completely agree with you. Unfortunately, in situations like that, 
we all know what the what the real re, what the reality is. Money talks; mm-hmm. it, it really does. And if you're going back through his history and some of his activities, you got to figure. Like I think it was back in 2003, he uh, did some bids to acquire the New York Magazine. Okay, I mean that's a lot right there, yeah. just by itself. There was other uh, advertisings he was trying to get into. Other investors like uh, Nelson Peltz. Uh, Media Mogul, New York Daily News, um, publishers and film producers like Harvey Weinstein. Um, there was well, buyers. At that point, nobody knew about Weinstein. No, no, I know that, but you got to you got to link into that first because those were his dealings. Those are what made him money. Mm. Um, There's Wall Street uh, investor bankers, and I mean, just off the bat, even back in 2003, you're talking 55 million dollars. We'll be back after a quick break. Hey, Ryan. Hi, this is Sarah Palin. Ryan Donald Trump Jr. Hogs to win seal. Hey, everybody, I want y'all to check out a fellow Marines podcast. My name is Ted Nugent, and I got a call from my buddy Ryan F. Samuels, and he wants me to tell you that he's a working hard, playing all-American son of a who is celebrating God, family, country. country. Welcome to the Ryan Samuels Show, one of the top political podcasts in the United States, where we have a healthy distrust for government and mainstream media. The Ryan Samuels Show is a raw, unfiltered look at American politics. Well, look, the court documents rec- uh, record that a search of Epstein's residence by Palm Beach Police Detective Joseph Ricari in 2005 uncovered an in- uh, incriminating Amazon receipt for books on sex slavery. The books he ordered are titled SM 101, A Realistic Introduction, Slave Craft, Road, Roadmaps for Exotic Servitude, Principles, Skills, and Tools, and Training with, at, with Miss Abernathy, a workbook for exotic slaves and their owners. Right there, you need to be put away because if you're buying books on sex trade, first of all, you're a fucking retard. Well, you're not normal, I can tell you that much. And number two, like, he literally tried to buy sex trade for dummies. That's exactly what he was trying to yeah, do. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to read something here, which really is the essence of this entire, the entire thing. Now, you can go back in his history from when he was a teacher to how he started with Greenberg and all this other stuff. You can, you can bring all that up and he, how he learned how to manipulate the system and whatever. This is the question that really needs to be answered. They entered into a non-prosecution um, agreement. Okay. In 2006, the FBI began its own investigation of Epstein, nicknamed Operation Leap Year. Okay. All right. It resulted in, a, in an indictment in June 2007. Alexander Acosta, Acosta the uh, attorney, the U.S. attorney for the Southern District of Florida, agreed to a plea deal. With Alan Dershowitz. With Alan Dershowitz. Now, Dershowitz has been on his plane many, many, many times. Okay, he, Dershowitz is the is the lawyer that actually defended Trump in his um, impeachment. Okay, he was one of those guys, and he's also he's a stout Democrat who actually backed Trump, and he's a Republican. So right then and there, Dershowitz, I don't know, he's like he's almost like ninety, I guess it's eighty five, ninety, whatever. He can't be trusted. Number one, okay, and the, you know when he helped to negotiate this. He, um, they granted him immunity from all federal charges, along with four named co-conspirators and, un- and any unnamed potential co-conspirators. According to the Miami Herald, the non-prosecution agreement essentially shut down an ongoing FBI probe into whether there was more victims and, pow- and other powerful people who took the time in, 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 ex- in ex- Epstein's cases. At the time... This halted all investigations and sealed the indictment. Um, the deal would be kept. The seal and then the deal would be kept from the victims. So those poor victims, you know, they're not they're not receiving anything. They're not doing. They're not getting any help. They're not getting any 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 justice. Why the fuck would you do that? Well, you're talking about how they how he's in the the will. No, they they, it's, they went to a non a non non prosecution agreement in Florida. They basically shut down all the investigations, and 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 they made a deal with the guy. 
you know, they indicted him, but then they shut down the investigation because I, I don't know why. No one seems to know why. They can't get the, what, how is that benefiting anybody? He should have been prosecuted with, with, the, with the indictment and he should have been put in fucking jail. Right yeah. then there, they should have confiscated the, his assets alone. Could have fucking probably paid for the ta- the entire tax of Florida. <laughs> probably, you know. That's I mean, true. this guy's got all this fucking money that he's he's made, you know, on the backs of everybody else, and all the bullshit that he's been, he's done. He's been accused all over the place. They're finding shit all over, you know, with about him and in in, in in the kid trafficking, but yet. Somehow they shut the investigation well, down I mean, to and be, keep it from the fucking people. Right, that, Come on. I, I'm sorry, fucking but goddamn to have three books up. like what I said and to turn around and be like, oh, okay, oh, we found sex trafficking books in your house, but we're going to give you a plea deal. It doesn't make sense. Do. It doesn't make sense. And I think go back to Joshua's point, money does talk. Oh. Money's t- he's got. Somebody has to come and figure out. You know, Alexander Ocasta. Well, that's why in all of his mugshots, motherfucker is smirking. smiling. He's a prick. He knew. He like knew. He knew. Yeah. You want to you wanna know a little tid more bit about how much money he probably, well, I can't say how much money he probably did made, but more of like what could possibly be the backing for him and why he may be able to get out of things. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how much this is directed, but there was an Israeli startup in 2015. The There was an 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 Israeli newspaper, uh, I'm probably going to butcher this, Haritz, reported that Epstein invested in the startup Reporty Homeland Security, which, if anyone knows, rebranded later on as Carbine in 2018. Um, the startup is actually connected with the Israel's defense industry, and it was headed by former Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Barak, who was also at one time the defense minister and chief of staff of the Israeli Defense Forces. That right there should tell you and probably scare you about the kind of backings and deals that he has. Yeah. Again, the right people making deals with the right people. Now he's making deals with countries and he should have been locked he should have been locked up right then and there because I don't know if he was if he was um Involved with Israel as and then going around trying to say that he was a uh, an official of the United States. I don't know if that's the case, but if he was, he should have been arrested. You know, like a, uh, impersonation of like a government official, right? Or they, they they have what they call the Logan Act. You can't do that. You can go to prison if you um, you deal with another country um, and you're and you're not an official and, of yeah, the and United you're representing States. Representing the United States, right? It's uh, you know, I'm a little slow tonight. I'm sorry, but I'm just uh, but um, it's aggravating. After that, on June. 30th, 2008, after Epstein pleaded guilty to a state charge, one or two of procuring for prostitution a girl below 18, he was sentenced to 18 months in prison. While most convicted sex offenders in Florida are sent to state prison, Epstein was instead uh, housed in a private wing of the Palm Beach County Stockade. Yes. And according to the sheriff's office, uh, was after three and a half months allowed to leave jail on work release for up to 12 hours a day, six days a week. This uh, contra- contravened the sheriff's own policies uh, requiring a maximum remaining sentence of 10 months and making sex offenders ineligible for the privilege. He was allowed to come and go outside of specific release hours. And has anybody ever answered for that? Not Do that we I know. know. No. no, see, that's the problem. That's the people you got to get to now. You can't get to him anymore. Now you got to, somebody's got to do a, a, an investigation into why these people did what they did because they empowered this son of a bitch. They let him get away with it. Now, anybody check their bank accounts? Was there oh, a right lump so, of money deposited? Uh, Epstein's cell door was left unlocked and he had access to, attorney, to the attorney room where a television was installed for him. Before he was moved to Stockade's previously unstaffed er, uh, infirmary, he worked at the office of the foundation he had created shortly before reporting to jail. He dissolved it after he served this time. The sheriff's office received $128,000 from Epstein's nonprofit to pay for the cost of extra go, services Josh. being provided during his work release. His office was monitored by permit deputies whose overtime was paid by Epstein. They were required to wear suits and checked in welcome guests at the front desk. Later that uh, later the sheriff's officers said their 
these guests were destroyed by the. Oh, I'm sorry, the guest logs were destroyed by the department's records retention rules. How convenient. Uh, although inexplicably the uh, stockade visitor logs were not. He was allowed to use his own driver to dri- uh, drive him between jail and his office and other appointments. Epstein ster- served almost 13 months before being released for a year probation on hi- on house arrest until 20, uh, August 2010. While on probation, he was allowed numerous trips on his corporate jet to, residence, uh, to his residence in Manhattan and the U.S. Virgin Islands. He was allowed long shopping trips and to walk around Palm Beach for exercise. Pretty much, they said you can kill. You can still keep doing what you're doing. Yes, go rape whatever you want. That's basically what what Florida said. Oh, fucked up. These cocksuckers should be. Somebody's got to an answer to this, and yet nobody does. Nobody does. We don't. We, nobody gets prosecuted for it. Nobody, you know, he, he gets handed. They, they, he hands them 128 G, and nobody says a fucking word about it. Okay, it never makes the paper. Where are all our pro, Where are all our investigative reporters? Where are all these fucking people? You know, we, do we have anybody in this country that has any conscience anymore that could that could actually stand up to scumbags like this? And does, you know, I mean, I get it. You know, you got the right money in the right spots, but he also, he also has a lot of people that that he hurt. Where are these people? Why are they not sticking up? Why are they not screaming, you know, from the top of a fucking mountain? We'll be back after a quick break. Hello, nerds. Come listen to the History Nerds United podcast, and let's make history fun again. We interview today's best authors, whether they are established Pulitzer Prize winners or someone debuting their first book. Let us show you that history is not a boring class you took in high school, but a place where the best stories come from. And we don't just cover history. We also love to chat about true crime, biographies, memoirs, and so much more. So head on over to History Nerds United and let us introduce you to your new favorite book and learn the story behind the story. History Nerds United. You want to know something very interesting? Um... This went into into my uh into my timeline as to like what happened like when he was at the jail. We can talk about that later. But uh two days before he died, in his will he signed that um whatever assets that he owns was gonna go to a private trust so that anybody and if any victims seeking um uh, reparations reparations yeah. they wouldn't be able to allow to it because it's in a because it's in a private trust and it's a they can't get their bag. hands on that. You know what's really scary? And I'll try to make this a little quick. Um, the civil cases listed with him. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I lost count already. Like the first one was in 2008. It was Jane's, uh, it was Jane Doe's versus Epstein. Um, the same one again, but it reoccurred in 2014. Victims rights, Jane, uh, Jane Doe's versus uh, United States. It went further than that. Uh, you have another one, Virginia Roberts, uh, Gay free, I believe I'm saying that right. Uh, versus Epstein, that was 2015. You have uh, the same uh, Virginia Roberts uh, Guy free versus uh, Gislaine Maxwell, 2015. Um, yeah, Jane, Gislaine. yeah, there's also Jane Doe versus Epstein and Trump, 2016. You got Sarah Ronson versus Epstein and Maxwell. Yeah, there's 20 civil cases. I just counted them. I, I know. I'm just going over a couple. Like just up till about 2019, like Sarah Ransom versus Epstein and Maxwell. That was 2017. Bradley Edwards uh, defamation versus Epstein, 2018. Uh, Maria Farmer versus Epstein and Maxwell, 2019. Uh, Jennifer Arose versus Epstein and Maxwell, 2019. You got. Caitlin Doe versus Epstein Estate 2019. Like it's it's ridiculous how many this huh. year. But so, what's what's the common denominator times? in all of them though? You, 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 the year? No, the no, common denominator would be they never made it to court because yeah. they were all paid off. It, it, that's why it was, it was civil cases like right. these. That, that's why they can occur multiple times in a year. Which, as you saw, as I've stated, you saw a couple of them were the same year, um, but just different ways of going about it, it just they, they don't proceed past that but there's well, so many all the way up till 2020 yeah, uh, here's 
Here's a little a little tidbit I, I want to talk about because this is actually pretty fucking um, funny. The immunity agreement uh, and his lenient treatment were the subject of ongoing public dispute. The Palm, Be- Palm Beach police chief accused the state of giving him pre- uh, preferential treatment. And the Miami Herald said U.S. Attorney Acosta gave Epstein the deal of a lifetime. Yeah. I, I, Following I, I, Epstein's arrest in 2019, uh, July 2019 on sex trafficking car- charges, Acosta resigned as Secretary of Labor effective July 19, 2019. After the accusations became public, several persons and institutions returned donations that they had received from Epstein, including Elliot Spitzer, Bill Richardson, and the Palm Beach Police Department. Harvard University announced that it would not return any of his money. Various charitable donations that Epstein had made to finance ed- uh, children's, edu- uh, children's education were also questioned. Wait, so I got a, I got a question. Anytime like something like happens and these like people step down and they resign, is it because once they resign, they're not legally allowed to talk about what they did when they were in office? Uh, depends on if the court if the, if the court gives them. Uh, you know, uh, if they put a gag on it or not, it, it, that's just that's basically. I, mean, I, I, I think um, Acosta stepped down because he doesn't. It, it's kind of you know it, it, it's either you step down as your place or we're gonna go after you. And then they blend into the woodwork at that point. Yeah. They, 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 so they're they not lay in, low. They take their money and they go. Don't forget these guys like this guy Acosta. When you, when he, he resigns, he's still gonna get paid. He's still going to get paid a certain amount of money, and he's going to be basically. I'm going to take my money. I'm going to keep my mouth shut, and who knows how much money was left under his bed by the, by uh, by Epstein or Epstein's people. He's got tentacles everywhere. I mean, well, you know, France, New Jersey, Florida, the islands. I mean, it, it's 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 a fucking nightmare. Here's the little thing. Um, we're gonna take a second break to go uh, listen to our, a word from our. Uh, our other podcast, but uh, he got arrested for the second and final time. I mean, um, he got arrested up here in Jersey, too. Yeah, and we'll talk about that right after we get back from our little break. Okay. How you doing? You like movies? We like movies. You like music? So do we. What about TV and video games? Are you interested in those? Well, I'm going to make you an offer you can't refuse. A brand new podcast is coming soon. We are Multimedia Mafia. We like to discuss, critique, and argue over the media that we love. Series premieres on May 5th with a new episode dropping every Wednesday. Tune in, or a couple of guys from Jersey is going to pay you a visit. So welcome back to our break, from our break. Um, so his second criminal case, on July 6, 2019, Epstein was arrested by the fbi dash New York Police Department Crimes Against Children Task Force at Teterboro Airport in New Jersey on sex trafficking. Uh, sex Damn, trafficking and all the time we spend at Walmart down there too. Can you imagine that? You're talking about two years ago. We were there a lot at Walmart know, two years ago when they I first know. finally built it. You guys probably saw the cop cars, <laughs> and you guys were probably like, "Oh, I wonder what happened over there." Meanwhile, you got this monster just in the back. See, let me out of here, copper. <laughs> Okay. All I'm saying is Jersey That's exactly was exactly how it went down t- in my mind. Jersey was the one who took down Epstein. <laughs> We're good for something. So he was jailed at the <laughs> Metropolitan Correctional Center in New York, which has held prisoners such as John Gotti, Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, and poor Paul Manafort. So he was in the same prison as El Chapo. Uh, according to witnesses and sources... <laughs> Of the day of the arrest, about a dozen FBI agents forced upon his door in his Manhattan townhouse, the Herbert N. Strauss house, which uh, with search warrants. The search of his townhouse turned up evidence of sex trafficking and also hundreds and perhaps thousands of sexually suggested photographs of fully or partially nude females. Some of the photos were confirmed as those of underage females. In a locked safe uh Compact discs were found with handwritten labels, including the descriptions "young name plus name," mis- uh, "miscellaneous nudes one," and "girls and pics nudes." This guy doesn't know how to keep his stuff. See, that's, that's what bothers me. That, that's what that's, that's all. What that's they, all confirmed evidence. Yeah, right like there. idiot. How fucking stupid is this? Is is this guy? And that just bleeds his arrogance that he can keep this shit around and not think he's going to get that happen. You could done in Florida, you do whatever the fuck you want. 
He figures he's got everybody in the right pocket, so he's or, gonna keep all this shit, and and he don't care because he don't. He's Jeffrey Epstein, and he's got everybody on his in his on his pocket. No, yeah, just going just going with that, or he frontly displays stuff like that, like yeah, like he didn't like give a like fuck. an idiot. So like when he well, gets well, caught, here's and, the people, thing, though. and people and people see the evidence, if you, it's like oh, if you look at his, in, in in his mind, he got away with it the first time, mm -hmm. right? He yeah. had hundreds of thousands of photos, and in Florida they were like, yeah, okay. And he had basically had three books that were sex trafficking for dummies, and he, at that point they're like, "Yeah, you you know, eighteen months you can go. You know, we basically live your life any way you want, but you have to come back here, all right, Jeffrey? You have to come back here, and you have to say you have to come back to this house and be like, all right, sign in and sign out.' That's basically what they said the first time when they arrested him. So if you're Jeffrey Epstein, like, yeah, I'm gonna write out yet yeah, sixteen year old nudes right here. Nobody's gonna care. Arrogance. I was actually going to say a, a little tidbit that I, I find crazy because, as you guys all know, I lived in Florida for about six months. I didn't really learn much. Really? Yeah. I was in Florida for about six months. Did you see and a lot of gators? What? You leave no. Gino out of this, bro. Anyway, no. Uh, the thing that I found crazy that may have played a part into Epstein being free, even though there was criminal charges, is that the, I, if I'm correct, this was years ago at the time when I lived there, the age of consent or anything like that for a female, male-female combination, whatever it is, was 16. Okay. So I don't know if that's changed over the years or if there was some kind of a loophole with that. But I do remember and I do know that that like the limit was 16. Like if it was under that 15, you would definitely get jail time and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But you got to sit there and question like what were the actual uh, ages of these uh, girls that were involved. Right. If they were 16 and well, what above, I, what I was would, it reading. Be, what, would that play a part yeah. into then it, then it, him going free because of that? But what I was reading that, that most of the girls in Florida, mm -hmm. at least at this house in Florida and, and the Virgin Islands, they were 13, 14, 15 and 16 year olds. Oh, is it also you got to You got to It could be the age of consent, like you said, but it's yeah. also got to be whether they are on their own free will. Did he kidnap them? Yes. That you, too. you know, how many how many 16 that was, year olds? No, that wasn't the thing, though. They what basically what it was is the he paid 16 year old girls. Mm hmm. To go out and bring more girls. Basically, if you if you watch the videos of these girls talking, is that he paid them to go out and recruit more and more girls to come back to his house. Doesn't matter the age. 13, 14, 15, 16. As long as they're high school age girls, he recruited these girls to basically bring to his house. And they did willingly. So they went and partied and massaged him and stuff like that. And then it started to intensify. Meaning the whoever it might be, whatever, like I've heard it was uh, 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 U.S. senators and stuff like that where he would turn around and be like, just go in the room with them, you know, and, and give them a little wink. Like, here's two hundred dollars. Go in the room with with Senator Bob and, you know, do whatever he asks. You know, basically it's, it's shit like that. Or George Mitchell. And, <laughs> and these allegedly, I'm sorry. And these girls didn't. You know, they're like, well, okay, and then they 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 went. Yeah. So it's it's not just sixteen year olds. It was the sixteen year olds that he paid to go and recruit these other high school girls. Which most of them, if you look at most of these girls that, um, you know, that were there, they're all coming from low budget families, uh, bad homes, trailer park homes, stuff like that. There's a there's a disturbing uh take on his um disposition. I think that's what it's called. When uh, they're talking about, he's like, oh, I plead the fifth, I plead the fifth, I plead the fifth. And then at one, they ask him about, like, oh, something about um these these girls, these 12-year-old girls from France. And the only thing he says, I'm butchering the hell out of it, is, not nah, yeah, I wish I could tell you about that, but, like, a big smile on his face. I wish I could tell you about that. Yeah. I wish I could, but legally, I'm not allowed, I'm not allowed to talk about that. Well, so I plead the fifth. We're going to wrap up here soon, but one thing I want to get, I want to talk about, and I'm not going to talk about, we're, we're going to talk about his death day because there's a lot of shit to, to talk about about his death day. Right. Um, but what happened on August 29th, 2019, following his death, 10 days prior, 
<clears throat> sorry. Epstein's, uh, the case against Jeffrey Epstein was closed after Judge Burnham dismissed all sex trafficking charges. Wait a minute. Was that after he he was dead? After he was dead. Yeah, that's common though. That that that's really nothing there because, again, it's it's just like um, who, uh, Aaron Hernandez. You know, he wasn't convicted. He was only in prison and holding. When Aaron Hernandez killed himself, by law they had to drop the charges because he wasn't. He, he was wasn't, already convicted of of the, the certain stuff, but he was on appeal. So that means that the appeal was. Basically, well, you're not guilty. We're going to appeal it again. So because he killed himself in that little time frame, they had to wipe him. So Aaron Hernandez died a innocent man. That's probably the exact same thing that happened here because, you know, they, again, they didn't. There was no court. There was no court. He wasn't in court. There was no trial well, yet. He was arrested and he asked uh, to he requested to be released on bond, mm -hmm. offering to post a hundred million dollars with the condition that he would be he would also submit to house arrest in his New York City mansion. Mm -hmm. He was denied that request on July 18th. You, you got it again. This will be. A, I have the. I have the. Uh, I have the whole timeline as to what happened. Like, and before. on the next episode, we'll talk about that whole timeline on July twenty third, twenty nineteen. July twenty so, third. You want to give me a little preview here? So July twenty third is well, when. Let, let Ra you do it because I think he says he's got it. What, what was? What went down with that? Well, let's see. The twenty third. Let's see. Uh. On the third, on the twenty third, well, there's a there's a few things that happened before that. On the, I mean, I could tell you, I could tell you brief, but it's simply, like simply, simply on the twenty third that they found they found it they found him with a they found it they found him with a suicide attempt. Um, yeah, on rope the, on the neck. ground you, we, using uh, his bed sheets. And then I guess it'll and he got and he got and he got transferred and he got transferred into um special special housing unit. You got to look at it too. too that that when you, when I get, when you get a guy like that that's in, in jail, and now he's not in Florida anymore. He's in New York, the biggest media capital in the world. What you're going to have too is you're going to have, if there's anybody that he was involved with that has even any stroke, Clinton's. Okay, allegedly, allegedly. allegedly. No, well, he. he you know what? I'm not, hitting the allegedly button really hard it's right not now. Not allegedly. Oh my God, Joe! You even caught me off guard with that. What the hell? <laughs> It's it's not even allegedly he Clinton was on We're his gonna plane. We're going to die, y'all. Clinton was on his plane many many times. Oh, Dad wants to go head on head with Bill and Hillary Clinton. Well, well, not only that, not only that, allegedly. but no, 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 not only that. But speaking about Bill Clinton, this man had a this man had a painting of Bill Clinton in a blue dress, like a dress or like a blue suit. A dress, bro. I this gotta see that painting. This is Bill Clinton in a dress, yeah, I gotta blue see that dress like painting. like this in Jeffrey Epstein's house. They weren't gonna let in his, him in his Manhattan in the Manhattan house, by the way. I gotta see this fucking painting. They weren't gonna let him go. There, right. there was no yeah. way he was gonna go. We'll get into this in the next next segment. Yeah. Of this so next basically, episode. on the next episode, what I want to talk about is the, his death date, mm -hmm. whether or not we believe. He committed suicide, no. or whether allegedly he was taken out by some other person. And I think that's where we're going to get. That's that's going to be more of of, of more um, pertinent to our show, or we, we, you know, the questioning: Is this real? Is this what happened? You know, I mean, the background we put down tonight, I think, was really, really good. And it's going to, you know, the, the, if you're listening to this out there, you're going to understand that this guy. Was a monster, and he had a lot of people. This is a lot to cover, folks. Yeah, it, this is a ton of stuff here, and 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 you know, who did he piss off? So you know, yeah. so it, again, that's that's my take on it, and I, I think tonight was a really really good episode. Yes, you yes, know, yes. So. so obviously, after the episode ends, you'll hear our social media plug and our plug for the uh, uh, Green Hour podcast, which in time we're going to do something big with. I'm just letting that know now and letting everybody know now that listens, please go and listen to green hour podcast. It is a really good podcast. Um, but I think gentlemen tonight, good job. And I will see you guys next week for Jeffrey Epstein. Did he kill himself? Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. That's me. Yo, yo everyone. This is roadblock speaking. 
If you want to find out more about the Is This Real podcast, you can follow us on Facebook at facebook.com backslash is this real PC on Twitter at is this real PC or on Instagram at is this real podcast all one word sup bitches this is Teresa speaking if you want to find out more about Green Arrow podcast follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Green Arrow NJ or on Instagram at Green Arrow PC all one word or on Twitter at Green Arrow PC 